So how long between that and the Stars of Evolution, and what was the motivation behind the Stars of Evolution? Well, again, after I'd written that one, I thought I've got that's all I ever have to say about it. Oh, the other thing, the other thing that that was a kick was not so much Lucy as um, uh, La Lumiere's idea about Danica. I mm. hadn't I hadn't realised that there had been all that part of Africa in totally flooded by the yeah. sea. Yeah. So when so that I was going to ask about that. When when so that was another motivation for the scars of you. No, for the Aquatic Cape. So you found out about that? Yes, I found out about that. He wrote to me, uh -huh. and he wrote to Alistair Hardy. And Alistair Hardy was much taken with this. And he was a fellow of the Royal Society. And as a fellow of the Royal Society, he had the right to go to a meeting and say, this is an important contribution to scientific thought. I want it read into the minutes. And, and he was an old man then, and he hardly went to, out to any meeting, but he took himself along to a meeting of the Royal Society so that they had to publish it. Anybody who's a fellow and says this is worthwhile, they've got to publish it. And so um, that meant that it was there on the record. And, and, and that was La Lumiere? That was La Lumiere. And, and so he was a geologist? or, or was he, was a, he worked for an oil company. Yes, a geologist, sort of geologist. He worked for an oil company. But he had um, read Descent of Woman and thought it was possible. And then when he, because they were doing research into the geology, the reason, and the sea changes in the seabeds and so on, I mean, he thought this is relevant. I mean, this is where it could have happened, yeah. where the, it, it wouldn't be necessary for some ape to think, I think I will go into the water, the water could have never yeah. swapped them. I must admit, when I read about that, it yeah. completely, it was like a bolt of lightning. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. To, to, and it was in the Rift Valley, it was in the right part of the world. Right part of the world. And, and, and it's incredible that, you know, and, and it, it definitely did happen. I mean, I, I, I read in uh, the Encyclopedia Britannica the other day, we got yeah. the CD version, mm -hmm. and I just, mm -hmm. one of the, the first thing I looked up was, you know, at the yeah. AFAR, uh, yeah. AFAR, as you call it. Yeah. Uh, triangle, mm -hmm. and it was there, and it mm -hmm. talked about the Danical, Danical Depression, and it, yeah. they actually salt mine there today. Yes. And it occurred to me, it would be a great place to go and look for fossils. I mean, if they're digging the salt... But there are thousands of feet deep of salt. Well, but yeah, but I mean, over all those millions of years of evolution, maybe there's some... Uh, I don't think the bottom of that salt would be anything that they lived in. I think it would be cracks and all volcanic mm -hmm. and stuff. I've got a picture of Danica. I mean, it's just horizon to horizon, plain white. I mean, not yeah, white yeah. as far as you can see. But um, but no, I mean, you know, I, I th no, th there might. I mean, if there's just a chance in a thousand that on the Danica Alps there might be some traces of the, the last common ancestor. Or uh, you know the first of the aquatics because, but I don't know enough about the, the confirmation whether there's the kind of land there that would have preserved the fossils or would have brought them to light. But I don't think at the bottom of that sea. I mean, I I in effect, it could be bottomless because you get three continental plates all juddering mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. And the, I mean, you could be going going down, yes, yeah, so down forever. So, so, I mean, yeah, because they are moving apart. Yeah. Too, so, so, uh, so that, that, so that, um, that must have been very encouraging then to to to, to have a, a place that, yes, that, that, yes. That, to sort of investigate. It was new, and I, and I, and again, it was one of the things because although it had been published by the Royal Society, it had not been noticed anywhere else. Nobody, so I, I thought, well, there are a couple of things which have come up since descent. And um, if I don't put them on the record, they get forgotten about again. Mm. And of course, the other point you make in another of your uh, books is the the analogy between the uh, the you know the, the business oh, of yes. plate, te plate tectonics yeah. were, were yeah. not accepted for years, were they? And, and it was no. only later that they became yeah. accepted. So yeah. was that was that Lumiere's thing as well? Is he kind of into that? No, no. not really. No. No. Just just the uh, yeah. just knew about that. Part of so okay, well, what about scars of evolution? Because I mean. 
of, of the books that I've read, uh, they that's the one I, I like most. Yes. I must admit, I, yeah. I find that most exciting. Yes, well, um, that was partly through Mark Hagen. I mean, he, he was the first one to come out publicly and support it. Um, it was in a, a small thing called um, Medical Hypotheses, which is a sort of a professional journal, but since he'd been on the internet and they've been sniping the heart for his blood, they've established that it's the kind of journal where you pay to get the stuff published. So they, they've done that to um, try to detract from the value of his contribution to that journal. But anyway, he'd sent the, their um, some diseases of the, the, aquatic, the aquatic theory and linking disorders of the, the doctors, he's a GP, you see, mm. that meet um, with, with, the, with the likelihood that the, the aquatic theory is right. And I hadn't obviously heard about it there, but I opened this, one of the Sunday papers and it said, the aquatic gate resurfaces. And one of the journalists had read that and said, you know, this is the first time since they said to a woman, somebody is thinking it might be right. So I'm through them. And he's, um, he's um, a passionate believer in it, and he spends a lot of his life outside his practice, researching it and keeping up with everything and arguing with everybody. And he's had dozens of papers published by now, because he sends them everywhere. And he wouldn't rest until somebody had published them. I mean, he's got a different slant on it than I have. But um, basically, that the water came into it. Mm, yeah. he, he, he believes that the aquatic phase was much earlier, wasn't it? And, and ne it never really ended, sort of thing. Yes, he's, yes, that's right. Um, he's, uh, 20 million years, the, the last common ancestor of all apes yes, was an aquatic. Yes, that's right, before, before uh, the split between the apes and the monkeys. That's right. And still going on, I, I think, um, it, it's a plausible case, I, I don't, it, it doesn't quite grab me because my approach all along has been why are we so different from apes? Mm -hmm. And to list the differences from apes mm -hmm. and try to explain them. Well, he is sort of blurring that by mm -hmm. saying, well, I mean, the apes also were aquatic. Mm -hmm. but it, it seems to me then you've lost mm -hmm. half of the argument. No, no, I, 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 re I read your thread on the internet mm -hmm. about that with him and mm -hmm. it was very interesting. And, and I almost admit I agree with you about that. Yeah. Just seem strange. I mean, I think you make the point. You know, he, he in his in his argument, an Australopithecine is a, an aquatic ancestor turning in, changing into a chimp. Yes. And moving towards a chimp, whereas most, yes. you know, I think we think it's the other way around. It's like yes. some yes. Uh, an ape, a chimp like ape, could be on the way to becoming human. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I, I I've got to hand it to him, but uh, it's hard actually to disprove what he's saying, and there are just one or two strong bits of evidence, like the not failure to find the ancestors of chimps and the gorillas, but there may be um, sort of habitat reason for that. Anyway. There's, there's one, one specific question on that. Uh, I mean, yeah. when I was, I, I was email, you know, discussing it on the internet with Mark, and um, I, he, he seems to be saying that there is no fossil evidence mm for chimpanzee-like ape in Africa before six million years. And that to me was kind of bolt out of the blue. I mean, I, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't re re believe that. It is very strange. That's the strongest, strongest piece of evidence. Yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's strange, because uh, all the things I've read, it just seemed to be there by implication that, yes. that in fact there were fossils there. Yes, but, that's uh, right. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so, um, so the scars of evolution were kind of like, it's, it's, it's uh, I suppose, the, the tissue and the, 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 the you know, like Mark's yes, thing it, about it fat. And, yes, and it like said, that. what are the things, why do we suffer from diseases which none of the other animals suffer for, from, and um, what caused them, and, and how to explain them. It was starting from the, the medical end and the, the sort of physiology end. Um, rather than 
telling stories or arguing about um, Australopithecus or anything. It was purely looking at ourselves as we are now. And um, so many of the things which are special to us, as opposed to me, it seemed to be deleterious. I mean, it isn't only that that they don't seem to be of any help to a land animal, they seem to be um, maladaptive for a land animal. So, yeah, that was one of my favourite books to write. <laughs>